these two Mario recolors look familiar to you? Well, if you're a fan of my videos, then they should. Marjo and Marco. Despite being recolors of Mario and Luigi, Marjo has a good reason for being a recolor of Mario, and Marco wasn't always a Luigi recolor. When I reintroduced Marjo and Marco into my videos, my character gave an explanation as to who they were. In my video Luigi Loses It, I gave exposition on how Marjo is a rich businessman who happens to look exactly like Mario. And the reason for this is because he was a character that I made for a really old blooper video from 2008. It was a three-part video called The Prince and the Plumber. During this exposition, the music that plays is the options menu music from Pokemon Stadium 2. The same music that I used for the beginning of The Prince and the Plumber. <laughs> The one I used for the Prince and the Plumber was recorded directly out of the game, so it's not very high quality and I couldn't find a better one at the time. So where did the idea of Marjo originate from? The idea for Prince and the Plumber started with a flash animation from Newgrounds.com called Luigi's Bad Luck 4, which I saw after watching Luigi's Bad Luck 1 through 3, which I found after watching another flash called Mario's Bad Luck, which takes place in Super Mario Land, but I heavily digress. In Luigi's Bad Luck 4, the viewer is given options on how to torture Luigi. The very last option lets you choose how Luigi outright dies because of his bad luck and because Newgrounds flashes are notorious for their edgy and explicit content. Back on topic. One of the choices you have is that Mario, whose name is misspelled as Marjo, which is exactly where I got the name Marjo from, dances on top of Luigi. I don't think this was a typo on the Flash Creator's part since Mario's name is spelled as Marjo again in Luigi's Bad Luck 6, which I want to talk about next since Luigi's Bad Luck 5 has nothing on the topic. Luigi's Bad Luck 6 is a simple Flash animation where Luigi goes to fight Bowser, who has his Koopa design from the Super Mario Bros. Super Show for some reason, and he fires a rocket at Luigi from his mouth while Tubba Blubba Chase music plays. Right after this, Luigi's mansion is crushed by... Marjo's Mansion! That's right! This is where the idea of a character named Marjo, who was wealthy and owned a mansion, came from! It was inspired by this very Flash animation from Newgrounds. This Flash animation is what started it all! This Flash animation is what started the Marjo character! The Prince and the Plumber starts with an opening that establishes Mario, who we all know and then it establishes another character named Marjo by showing that he lives in a mansion, followed by his appearance at the time, which is a look-alike of Mario represented as a recolor of the B Mario power-up from Mario Galaxy. This opening, and pretty much this entire three-part video, was inspired by a movie called Beethoven's Fourth. The plot is actually rooted in the old tale of the Prince and the Pauper, but the opening of Prince and the Plumber the exact wording and dialogue of it was taken from a Disney Channel commercial for the movie Beethoven's Fourth. In this house lives a dog named Beethoven. Oh, don't you dare! Beethoven! In this house lives a dog named Michelangelo. Well done. Then one day these two dogs trade places. And neither house is ever the same again. So, did you notice any similarities between the two? The video talks about the two of them. One normal, one wealthy, who will trade places, which of course they do. This is one of the very few videos of mine where Bowser actually kidnaps Peach and it's not part of a game. This three-part video establishes Marjo as a wealthy businessman who's busy. And Marjo is even portrayed as sounding like Mario in this video, not just looking like him. Whoa! Whoa! Anyway, Marjo's character wasn't as developed back then. He was very much a simple one-dimensional character. His only personality traits being that he's a businessman and that he's used to a life of luxury. Switching places with Mario gives him a taste of Mario's life of action and adventure. He didn't even know how to drive a cart then, which would mean perhaps he never drove a golf cart when he played golf. Someone else always drove it for him, which would make sense because a rich person can pay someone to do that for them. The scenes at Marjo's Mansion happen with Poshly Heights music from Thousand Year Door playing. Although the one in the actual video is of low quality because of this sound that plays through it. Marjo is established as having two butlers. At the time I was trying to decide what stock image I would use to represent his butler, 
but there were two in particular that I wanted to go with, so I went with the idea that he was rich enough for two butlers. The first one I named Tylo, which is a variation of the name Tyler. The first thing he says to Marjo is wakey wakey. I always thought that was a cringy thing to say, but I'll explain in a bit why I chose that. The character of Tyler the Butler is based on the butler from the movie Beethoven's Fourth. Tylo is based on a character called Jonathan Simmons, who in the movie is played by Mark Lindsay Chapman. In the movie, Johnny Simmons says wakey wakey to Michelangelo, the dog living in the mansion who switches places with the other dog Beethoven in the movie. Wakey wakey! At the time I thought wakey wakey was just something that Butler said and being so young and naive at the time I went with it. Bennington is Marjo's second butler. He is portrayed by the stock image of a butler with a big burger. This establishes that Marjo is not a vegetarian, unless that happens to be a veggie burger, but it's never mentioned. Anything up to that point just says burger, so Marjo isn't a vegan. While Mario was learning how to live Marjo's life, Marjo was learning how to live Mario's life, which brings us back to the fact that Marjo didn't know how to drive a cart. He also had to learn hands-on how to defeat Bowser by grabbing his tail and throwing him into a bomb. After all that was over, the two switch back and the video ends. The exposition from the reintroduction of Marjo and Marco gave a brief summary of Prince and the Plumber when it talked about Marjo. After Prince and the Plumber, Marjo didn't appear again until this short video where Mario destroys the castle with Thor's hammer that he got from this world apparently, and Marjo shows up, breaks the fourth wall, and pays to have it repaired. Evidently out of his own insurance. That is so nice of him! Look at me taking a writing mistake for the time and making it work. The video even gloats and brags in the ending about the fact that Marjo made an appearance. We don't see Marjo again after that until he appears in an old Roblox video of mine. The Legend of the Crystal Stars, a three-part video that a fan of mine wanted me to make because of how it was so easy to persuade me and talk me into making certain videos back then. This three-parter takes elements from Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and combines them. Two games that we thankfully got remakes for years later. Anyway, Marjo appears being portrayed as having this big golden top hat which Roblox calls the golden top hat of bling bling because they can! He seems to love that barrel roll song which is a remix of the song Moscow by Dishingist Khan which by the way is German not Russian for which I would get hit with another copyright claim later on for using it in my video SM64 bloopers the blood maze which is a copy paste rehash of the urine maze but I digress. Marjo is listening to the song on his private jet and he encounters a stowaway called HOLY sh I REMEMBER THIS GUY, DO YOU?! And then after the two of them fight, and Silver Deer Antlers jumps out of the plane, Marjo arrives at his mansion where apparently the sixth crystal star is because apparently the Garnet Star always has to be located somewhere luxurious and full of rich people. Marjo appears again in a two-part video called The Marjo Express, where Marjo invites Mario and his friends to his mansion to play Mario Party 3 minigames, basically. The titular train in this is actually the Access Express from Thousand Year Door, and part one got hit with a copyright claim because it used the Ken Booth song, The Train Is Coming, which at the time I wanted to use in my videos ever since I heard it in a movie called Money Train. The next video Marjo appeared in was Marjo's Cookie Vault, my last video before the premiere of this big project that many of my fans know and love. In this one, Marjo visits the castle and tells Mario that his brother Marco is coming to claim a secret cookie stash from 10 years ago, even stating that Marco is the one who owns the stash of cookies, which is inside a pyramid in Egypt. Just because Marjo was trusted to guard this cookie vault for 10 years, the video title implies that it's his. The video should really have been called Marco's Cookie Vault. Talk about false advertising! Oh well, Luigi was surprised that Marjo had a brother, but Marjo says he doesn't have any more brothers. According to Marjo, the cookie vault's purpose is to curb world hunger. Apparently, the only way into the vault is through a portal inside this weird looking ball character. My desire to include this weird ball character in my videos is part of what led to me coming up with an idea this bizarre. The weird ball is called a Civa Ball. Civa Balls is actually an online flash game you can play that teaches you about civics. This flash game is exactly where I got the strange and unique design for this weird ball character. The character's name is Cookie Civalt. The word Civalt being a combination of the words civics and vault, like how Civa Balls combines civics and balls. 
The balls in the game have different designs based on what part of the world they're in, and though this game has a sequel, the balls all have the Egyptian design in all three parts of the world portrayed in the first game, which could be an oversight on the developer's behalf, but I digress. I used an Egyptian design for Cookie Civil. This is how I got the idea for the Cookie Vault to be in Egypt. Moving on, Cookie Civil won't let anyone into the vault except for Marjo, Marco, and those with Cookie Hearts. That last one of which was a plot device for Lily to be able to get into the vault and just eat every single cookie inside. Then we're introduced to Marco, who in this video only is a recolor of Mario just like Marjo, but more specifically he's a green recolor of Marjo as you can see here. When Tylo comes and tells them that the vault was broken into, even though Lily didn't technically break into it, she was just able to get past its so-called security, which I now realize is a freaking plot device as I already stated. Anyway, after after Tylo tells them this, Marco goes berserk and loses it, and blames Mario and Luigi for it, since he knew Marjo and trusted them with the responsibility of protecting the vault. Marjo, perhaps somewhat being out of character as I now feel, goes along with Marco and loses trust in Mario and friends. I don't know. Nowadays I feel like Marjo would give them a chance to prove themselves without getting mad. But of course, Mario and friends do try to prove themselves innocent. Sival tells Marco what really happened, and Marco realizes this and sees it as a fault in the vault's security. Conveniently, the Cookie King returns and takes over Womp's fortress, and Mario goes to fight this alleged Cookie King, which I established in an earlier video in favor of Lily, a cute Sonic fan character I added to my videos because I was friends with her creator, a character that my fans had grown to love over the years. Mario, of course, defeats the Cookie King, who is a retextured Womp, Sivalt explains everything to everyone, and so Marco tries to get Lily arrested, but then a deus ex machina happens where it turns out that defeating the Cookie King left Womp's fortress littered with cookies, which are used to refill the cookie vault so everything goes back to normal and everyone's happy, the end. For 12 years, that was Marco's only appearance in my videos until we would see him again in Luigi Loses It, as a Luigi recolor, of course, because Marco is is like Marjo's Luigi. Then we see Marjo in a video of mine called Luigi's Big Moment, which is inspired by Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Then they stop appearing or being mentioned in my videos completely for the next 10 years until Luigi loses it at the video when I reintroduce them and Mawai too, but I'll save him for another video. Now we come to the point in time when I wanted to develop and expand on Marjo and Marco as characters. Mawai was easy thanks to his new, completely unique and original design, but I wanted to flesh out Marjo and Marco beyond their roots to make them more interesting than just the exterior redesigns that they got. Similar to how two things are opposite, but depend on each other like the sun and moon, day and night, every pair of Pokemon legendaries since generation 2 of Pokemon, I wanted Marjo and Marco to have a similar relation. Marjo was established before as a wealthy businessman living in luxury who was always too busy, but had a heart of gold, both figuratively and literally. And he's friends with Mario because the two look like each other and even switched places. On the other hand, Marco, owning an entire vault full of cookies, would be established as this crazy risk taker who bets huge sums on far-fetched things like trying to curb world hunger with a huge supply of cookies, who also loses his temper easily when things go wrong. So that would make him a disgruntled and irritable person, the perfect yang to Marjo's yin. The binary relation these two brothers share is symbolized even more by the stock market. In the stock market, when stocks go up in value over time, that is called a bullish trend, named after the way a bull swings its horns, which is up. Naturally, Marjo's favorite animal is a bull, and Marjo believes in making money in the stock market the traditional way of buying low and selling high. Conversely, when a stock goes down in value over time, that is called a bearish trend, named after the way a bear swings its claws, which is down. Naturally, Marco's favorite animal is is a bear, and Marco believes in making money in the stock market when stocks drop in value by short selling high and buying back low, which may seem unorthodox to someone who's not that familiar with stocks, but it's true. Making money in the stock market when stocks drop in value is possible, but it's also much riskier, and Marco is the kind who lives for that kind of thrill. Marco is a risk taker, unlike Marjo, who prefers to play it safe. This would also mean he can talk Marjo into investing in volatile stocks before they skyrocket, or let Marjo convince him to play it safe with more stable stocks when the risk isn't worth it. Oh yeah, when I reintroduced Marjo and Marco, I also reintroduced Tylo and Bennington, they're two butlers. 
This time Tylo is represented as a 3D Gary's Mod NPC of James Bond from GoldenEye, and Bennington is represented with a model of Saul Goodman. I'll let you come up with your own theories in the comments below. But here's some food for thought for you. Bennington is also a lawyer, and he's represented by Saul Goodman. If you watch Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to it. I'll leave you to your own fan theories about Saul Goodman, aka Ben- I, I mean, and Bennington. Oh yeah, check out the way Marjo and Marco move. Marjo's head is usually pointed up, while Marco's head is usually pointed down. A literal nod to their stock market mentalities and personalities. Marjo's signature ends pointing up, while Marco's signature ends pointing down. They also have a last name, which is Dogrand. A combination of the words Do and Grand. Do means money, Grand means thousand. Because of how Lily just went into the vault and ate the entire cookie vault, Marco apparently had beforehand bet against his own cookie vault because he knew they would fail after that. This is insider trading, which is illegal, but hopefully he thought of that and found ways to systematically get away with it, the same way Saul Goodman systematically gets away with a lot of illegal things, if you're familiar with the character. Maybe he and Bennington worked it out together. Maybe Bennington really is Saul Goodman, but that's just a theory. An MM54321 iceberg theory. Alright, now I'm going to talk about the religious aspects of Marjo and Marco's characters. It isn't hard to guess this anyway, but here it is. Marjo is a kind, honest person and he's also religious, believing in heaven and doing good, playing by the rules and being faithful to God. Marco is the opposite, a mean, distrusting person who believes in hell and makes deals with the devil. With reason, of course. As a matter of fact, the newspaper at the end of my Wonderflu video calls Marjo a bullish saint and Marco a bearish satanist. But they also balance each other out, and that leads into what I want to talk about next. What these two brothers have in common in terms of religion is that they both want the best for everyone, and they would each help people in their own ways. Marjo would show you the path to enlightenment and salvation, while Marco protects you from the path of ignorance and damnation, putting himself through dangers and risks like hell itself so others don't have to. Marjo and Marco each operate religiously the way they operate financially and personality-wise, and they're very much on opposite ends in the spectrum of each of these things. Marjo is friendly, comforting, and righteous, while Marco is stern, impulsive, and very distrusting. These two are opposites. They're two sides of the same coin, different and yet the same, depending on each other to balance each other out and imprint on each other, influence each other, learn from each other. Marjo and Marco both started out as bland characters, but hopefully everything I talked about fleshed them out more and made them much more interesting, don't you think so? Share your thoughts in the comments below. There's a song by Pharrell Williams and Trey Parker called Hog Me from Despicable Me 3. Can't play it here because I'll get a copyright claim, but one of the lyrics from the song, You're Either With Me or Doom, I think that lyric applies to these two brothers. In fact, check this out. Check this image out. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Marjo had a colleague named Dr. Vild, and he also had several ex-girlfriends in college, the latter of which, along with the Big Burger thing, shows that Marjo is not an overzealous saint like Ned Flanders was. If you've seen my three-part series Bean Venture and my Halloween 2023 video, then maybe you remember this scene where Marjo and Marco are talking about how they took advantage of the stock market, specifically the Bean Bean Kingdom stock market back in 2019. That thing about Kekleta being Queen Bean's younger sister was just a bonus. They also made a small cameo in my 100k subs video, along with their butlers. Their first fully voiced appearance was in Seven Shoddy Shorts. I had to use AI for both of them. Marjo's voice is Elon Musk, Marco's voice is Mark Zuckerberg. Elon Musk is the owner of Tesla, Mark Zuckerberg is the founder of Facebook. Two people who are rich in real life so I thought those AI voices would work for them. Take a listen. We were hoping that you could give us a proper tour of this hotel. What this hotel lacks in luxury, it makes up for in history and excitement with how it is haunted and mysterious. Changing places with this guy all those years ago has really given you a taste for the finer spices of the middle class life, has it not? 
guilty as charged. And finally, in my April Fool's video for 2024, we have a picture of Marjo calling Zaragus unholy. This was drawn by AwesomeFan135 after I explained to him and the rest of my friends in the Discord chat about Marjo and Marco's new personalities way back in 2023. If you're a longtime fan of my videos, then you know who Zaragus is. But if you're not, then check out some of my videos on YouTube and maybe you'll find out who he is. Or you can at least check out my April Fool's Day video for 2024. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand Marjo and Marco a little better now. Be sure to look out for them in future videos. Speaking of which, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos and more of Marjo and Marco. Oh yeah, and a shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and thank you for watching this video. Catch you next time.